So let's begin standing hip width apart, reaching our arms up overhead, taking a deep inhale as we reach our hands towards the sky, belly pulls in, exhale, we fold forward. Inhale, half lift flat back, and exhale, fold forward. Letting the head hang heavy, nod the head yes, shake the head no. Let the hands dangle side to side. If you like, maybe grabbing opposite hands, opposite elbows. Maybe reaching our hands around our calves, pulling our chest a little bit closer to the legs, weights in the toes. Take a couple breaths here. And then exhale, bending the knees, belly pulls in as we, as we reach out, reaching our hands up towards the sky. And on our exhale, bringing our hands, heart to, hands to heart center. And then let's do this one more time. Inhale, reaching our arms up overhead. Belly pulls in, we dive forward. Coming up halfway. And folding forward. Hands on either side of our feet. And just let the head hang heavy. You can let the hands dangle. Grab opposite hands to opposite elbows. Reaching around our calves, maybe the ankles, just pulling a little closer. Maybe getting the chest a little bit closer to the legs. Weight is in the toes. Belly pulls in. Take a couple breaths here. And then on our next exhale, releasing the hands, belly pulls in, grounding the feet to the floor. Reaching our arms up all the way around, drawing a big circle, reaching our arms up towards the sky, fingertips touch, and then we just place our hands together to heart center. We'll couple, do a couple low lunges as we inhale, reach our arms up, overhead, belly pulls in, we dive down. We come up halfway, folding forward. Hands on either side of our feet, stepping the right leg back, dropping the right knee down to the floor. Making sure we can see the toes over our front knee. And we'll first come into a lunge. So coming up, hands can come to our thighs or palms face each other. We reach the fingertips up towards the sky. Feeling a stretch in the right side body, right side hip. And in the front part of the right leg, you can look forward or up towards your fingers. Back toes can be curled or flat on the floor. Reaching up out of the waist. And then exhale, bringing the hands down to the floor. Keeping the right hand on the mat, or if you like, you can take a block or a hardcover book, removing just the paper cover, and then placing the left hand on the low spine. So you can place a book or a block beside your foot and then place your hand on that. Rolling the left shoulder back. We look up towards the sky. You guys stay where you are. I'm just going to turn around so you can see. Right hand is on the floor or on a block or on a book. Rolling the right shoulder. Looking up towards the sky. Then option one, you can stay here. Or option two, right hand reaches up towards the sky. Rolling the right shoulder back. Hand is in line with the shoulder. And if you like, you can bring your chin to the shoulder. One more breath. Bringing the left hand down to the flat, to the floor. I'm just going to turn around again. And we step back. Coming into a tabletop pose. We hinge forward, squeezing the glutes, elbows drawn close to the body, and slowly lowering down to the floor. Coming all the way down, tops of the feet on the floor, hands underneath the shoulders. We roll the shoulders back, pushing the feet into the floor, lift the chest, ever so slightly for baby cobra. Exhale, lowering down, curl the toes, push up into a modified or high plank, your choice. And exhale, pushing back into a puppy, dolphin, or down dog. In this case, it's down dog. Take a couple breaths here. You can pedal the feet back and forth into down dog. Mm -hmm. 
Lift the right leg high up into the air. Look between your hands. Swing the right leg forward, planting the foot between the hands. Dropping the left knee down. First we come up. Hands come to the thigh, or palms face each other, we reach up towards the sky. This time feeling a stretch in the left side body, left hip, back toes can be curled or flat on the floor, your gaze can be forward or up towards the fingers. Take a couple breaths here. Every inhale, we reach our fingertips up. Every exhale, just slightly pushing the left hip forward just a little bit more. And then dropping the hands down to the floor on our exhale. Left hand stays on the floor beside the right foot. Again, you can place a block or a hardcover book without a cover, just so you don't rip the cover on the floor and place your hand on top. Or just having the hand on the floor, placing the right hand on the low spine, rolling that right shoulder back for the twist. Belly pulls in as we roll that right shoulder back a little bit more. And then option one, stay here, or option two, right hand reaches up towards the sky. As the hand lifts up, roll the right shoulder back just a little bit more. And if you like chin to shoulder, looking up towards the hand, or you can always gaze down towards the floor or into the center. Maybe even feeling a little bit of stretch in that right glute as the t you twist. Hands come down to the floor. We step back, feet or sorry, knees together or stepping back into a plank pose. So you can always do modified or high. Hinging forward, squeeze the glutes and we exhale, lowering down with control. Tops of the feet on the floor, hands underneath the shoulders. Roll your shoulders back, pushing the palms into the floor, lifting the chest up a little bit higher for Cobra. Belly button still on the floor, hips are still on the floor. Toes are back to, or the toes are on the floor, but the kneecaps start to lift up as you squeeze the glutes. Releasing some of the pressure of the hands and then slowly lowering down. Curl the toes, push up into a modified or high plank and exhale, pushing back into down dog. You always have the option for puppy or dolphin or even child's pose. Let's look between our hands. Slowly walk our feet to our hands, coming to the top of our mouth. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reaching up all the way around. And exhale, we're going to sit in a chair. So hands can be 45 degree angle or parallel to the floor, depending on how it feels in the shoulders. Making sure you can see your toes over your front knees and now toes and heels can be together or if you prefer you can take a little bit of a step apart. So about the feet would be about hip width apart. And making sure you can still see your toes over your front knees. Sit maybe a little bit deeper in the chair. And then see if we can come up to our tippy toes, lifting the knees up. Knees come up, toes press into the floor, and then slowly lower the heels down. Now again, you have options keeping the feet or the heels apart or bringing them together. We'll bring our hands into Namaskar, hinge forward. Left elbow is going to go over the right knee. And what's going to happen is you're going to use your tricep to push into the right thigh. Now looking down, making sure two knees are one line. What, what tends to happen is one knee likes to kind of push forward. So making sure two knees are one line first and then twisting. Maybe trying to roll the chest through so that one day our hands and the sternum will be in one line. Maybe sitting a little bit deeper, maybe trying to twist a little bit more. If you like, you can stay here, extend the arms. So left hand drops down, right hand reaches up. 
or you can keep the hands together. Coming back to center and then twisting to the other side. So this time left, right hand comes over the left leg. Pushing into the thigh with the tricep and then trying to bring the chest through. Pushing into the hands and pushing the feet into the ground as we twist. Holding here for one more breath. And then we'll slowly come back to center. You can straighten the legs. And then bend the knees. Inhale, reaching up all the way around. And exhale. Hands come to heart center. Reach your arms up overhead. Exhale, we fold forward. We come up halfway. And we fold. Hands on either side of our feet. Let's step back into a plank pose. And we're just gonna get some of the energy moving by pushing back into a down dog. And then coming forward into plank. Coming to the tippy toes and then pushing back into down dog. And the heels can touch if you like or the heels can stay lifted as you come forward. And pushing back. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, you can go into plank and then pushing into up dog. So dropping the thighs down just ever so slightly, lifting the chest up, looking up towards the sky and then exhaling, pushing back into down dog. Again, coming into plank and then you can push back or you can come down into up dog. This works our spine a little bit more. And then exhale, pushing back. We were gonna do this five more times. So coming forward, plank, to up dog, pushing back, plank, to up dog, pushing back. And you can go as flowy as you like. This is three. Pushing back, we're at two. And just move with the breath here. So as I exhale, I push back into down dog. As I inhale, I come forward. Maybe come up into an up dog. And then exhaling, pushing back. Let's do one more. Coming forward to plank. Up dog if you like, or you can always push back into, a into down dog. And then down dog. And just notice how we feel in this pose. Take a couple breaths. And then we'll come forward into plank. And exhale, lowering down with control all the way down. So we go over all the way down to the ground. Tops of the feet on the floor, hands underneath the shoulders. Let's slide our forearms out in front of us. Coming into Sphinx Pose, rolling the shoulders back, lifting the chest. Squeeze those glutes. We are going to feel this into the mid to low spine, kind of in that arch area. And then you have options. Option one, you can stay here. If you feel that this is too tight in the spine, curl the toes. If you still find this is a little bit too much, you can lower it down. And if you want, we can do this little slight twist here in Sphinx Pose. How we do that was we bend the right knee, look over the right shoulder. Toes can be flexed or pointed. All that choice. Just looking over your shoulder to see, to look at your toes. And then slowly lower down, bring the head to center. And then we'll curl and lift the left toes off the floor. Bend the left knee, looking over the left shoulder, maybe flexing and pointing the toes if you like, or just seeing the toes of the corner of your eye. Have that choice. And we'll lower down, bringing the head back to center. We can lower all the way down, bringing the hands underneath the shoulders, curl the toes, push up into a modified or high plank, 
and exhale, pushing back into a down dog. Feet are about hip width apart. You can bend the knees as much as you need to. Goal here is flat back first, belly pulls in. And then let's just come forward, a bit more into a plank, dropping down to our knees. We've warmed up our spine for camel. So in camel, we come to our knees and then we straighten up. So I'm gonna just demonstrate from the side. So knees are about hip width apart. We're on our knees and you have options. Toes can be flat on the floor or they can be curled. We roll the shoulders back, placing the hands on our hips. Roll the shoulders back a little bit more and we drop the head back. Now option one, this could be your pose. Option two, imagine we have a little string attached to our chest, lifting up the chest. So as we inhale, we lift the chest up Exhale, drop the head back, and then push the hips out. Lift the chest, drop the head back, and push the hips out a little bit more. Lift the chest, drop the head. Holding it here. And then slowly, so pushing the hands into the spine, coming forward. Head comes up last. But we want to try to avoid a shooting forward or flipping ourselves forward. And then coming hips on heels. We are going to do this one more time. Maybe going a little bit deeper. Just noticing how you feel. Camel brings up a lot of emotions. Because we are opening up our heart center and we're dropping the head back. Okay, when you're ready, we'll come back up to seated. Extending our legs as the knees push down to the mat. Placing our hands just on our lower spine or if you imagine we have like little back pockets, you can place your hands in those back pockets. Now I roll my shoulders back first. Now we lift the chest. And we drop the head. So by lifting the chest, what we're doing is we're just creating traction by lifting. Dropping the head and then we push the hips out. Lift the chest. Drop the head, push the hips out. Do it again, lifting the chest, dropping the head, and then we push the hips out. Now, when you get to a certain point, you might start to feel you can walk your hands down, your legs, maybe reaching back for your ankles. And then roll the shoulders, lift the chest up a little bit more, keeping the head back, push the hips out. Lift the chest. We're always breathing here, so don't stop breathing. Just maybe take sips of air, noticing how it feels. Pushing the hips out, and then when you're ready, slowly walking the hands back up the legs. Up to the hands, the lower spine, and then slowly bringing the hips back. Chest comes down, head comes up. Ever so slowly. And then sitting hips on heels if you like. We will do a counter pose of tortoise. So placing the tops of the feet on the floor, hips on heels, reaching our arms up overhead, crossing the thumbs as our hands are in prayer pose. Now we bring our ears to our biceps, or biceps to our ears, squeezing the arms together. Chin tucks in, and belly pulls in as we lower down. So we're rounding the spine here. And eventually the fingertips touch, our pinkies touch the mat. Head drops down, chin is tucked. Maybe the head touches the floor or the forehead. And then when you're ready, we slowly come back up. 
See if we can get the arms, head, everything coming up together. And then lowering down. Let's swing our legs around. And we're going to come into wind relieving pose. So let's straighten the legs and lie down on our backs. Now from here, belly pulls in, chin is away from the chest. And then we bend the right knee. We start to look down towards the chest, so chin starts to tuck. Reaching our hands around our shin. So trying to avoid the knee, coming down closer down to the middle of the shin, interlace the fingers. Chin is tucked. Rolling both shoulders down to the ground. Belly pulls in. And then using our biceps, pulling and bending the elbows, the right knee to the right shoulder. Again, looking down the chin. Or the chin's down and you're looking down your thigh or down towards your leg, down the chest. Chin is tucked here. Pull a little bit more. We're working the ascending colon. So the right side of the large and small intestine. Maybe you feel a little bit of a creak or a cramp in the hip crease and that's okay. Kink in the hip crease. Pull a little bit harder. Maybe that knee can come a little bit closer to that right shoulder. And then when you're ready, we slowly release. Take a breath here. And then belly pulls in, left knee bends. Keeping the right leg straight, we're reaching our hands around. Maybe you need to lift the head up, and then bringing it back down to the floor. Reaching around the, with the hands, interlacing the fingers, the hand should be on about the middle of the of the shin, rolling the shoulders down to the mat. Chin is tucked, and then bringing the left knee into the left chest. Left knee into the left shoulder. As you're looking down your chest, chin is tucked. Both shoulders are on the floor. Pulling the left knee a little bit more to the left shoulder. We're working the descending colon here. So the left side of the large and small intestine. Belly pulls in a little bit more. And then exhale, release. Take a breath. Now both legs. We might have to lift the head up a little bit just to reach around. So you have options depending on the flexibility of your hips and your body this today. What we're going to do is either you can reach your arms around, maybe reaching to grab both elbows and then dropping the head down. If that is hard or if it's not possible today, interlacing the fingers at least, squeezing the elbows in close to the body maybe or even just reaching around for your forearms belly pulls in as we bring the knees into the chest so for me i'm interlacing my hands and i'm just going to use my bicep strength to roll my shoulders back down to the floor chin gets tucked i'm looking down the middle of my knees feet are together belly pulls in shoulders roll to the floor the goal for this one is to see if we can get our back flat to the mat so chin is tucked. We're looking down the middle of our knees. Belly pulls in. And see if we can get each and every vertebrae, even kind of where the, the curve of our back pushes into the mat. Squeezing here. Holding it. 
and then exhaling, releasing, straightening the legs. You can place your hands on your hips or down by your side. Take a couple breaths here. Just noticing how it feels. So with both legs together, that was the transverse colon. So the middle area of our small and large intestine. And then our final pose is twisting. So placing our feet on the floor, knees are bent. You have options. You can lift, keep the feet on the floor or lift the knees up. Arms come out like airplane wings. And we can rotate or windshield wiper the knees side to side. You can do this with the feet lifted or flat on the floor, side to side. And from here, we're gonna drop the knees over to the right, looking over the left shoulder. Keeping the knees together, if you like heels together, they're dropping over to the right side as you look over the left. If that doesn't feel good for you, you can straighten the right leg. Left knee can come over. You can even take your right hand and just help that left knee. Or you can cross the right knee over the left and dropping the knees over to the right side. Looking over the left shoulder. And you can explore and practice and maybe try the different, different ways and see which one feels good for you. I like to have both knees together. And then coming to center, we drop the knees over to the left, look over the right. So you can have both knees together, heels touch, or left leg straightens, right leg crosses over, maybe helping using that left hand. Both shoulders try to stay on the floor here. Or maybe the left leg crosses over the right, and then both knees drop down to the mat. Maybe they don't touch and that's okay. You might feel a little bit more of a stretch in the glute on the right side when you're doing this. You may put a, feel a little bit of pressure in the knee. So just be mindful. Like I said, I like to have both knees together. And then when you're ready, coming to center. For a small little Shavasana. Straightening the legs. Arms are down by your side. Just take a few deep breaths in through the nose, out through the nose, closing the eyes. Wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Reach your arms up overhead. Give yourself a stretch. Or bring your knees into your chest to give yourself a little hug. Or massaging out the spine. And then you have many ways to come to seated. You can roll up from seated from this little position, or you can just roll to one side. And then just using your hand to come up to seated. And we'll just come, maybe crossing the legs or sitting hips on heels, bringing our hands together and we just say namaste. So namaste, thank you for joining me in this small and quick little class. The highest in me honors the highest in you. Namaste.